Kitchen with Paul and Christine. Today we are celebrating the summer season. Summer is my absolute favorite time of year. Me too. Yeah? Yes. What kind of activities do you like to do in the summer? In the summer when I was in China, I like to uh, go to a famous lake in Nanjing called the Xuanwu Lake, mm -hmm. sit in front of a willow tree and have a boat in front of me. Well, that sounds like a beautiful daydream. Yes. Uh, I also love summertime because of all of the delicious fresh produce that we have available to us. Definitely. A lot of goodies, a lot of good food. Mm -hmm. Lots yeah. of good food in season. Yes. To make delicious recipes with. Uh -huh. And speaking yes. of recipes, what are you going to be making for us today? I will make a congee for the summer. I love congee. Yes. Congee is like a porridge. Oh, okay, like a porridge or like a hot cereal yes. to eat for breakfast? Yes. Great. What will you make? Now I'm going to make a delicious egg dish that will also be good for breakfast. That's great. We'll be well fed. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let's get started. There's no okay. time to waste. Okay, let's do it. Okay. okay. Today's episode of The Rainbow Kitchen is about the summer season. Summer is the time of big yang. And it also belongs to the fire element, so we need to think about heat. Obviously, summer is the hottest time of the year. Now, when we think about how heat affects the body, we can look around at our environment and take cues from nature. When it's hot outside, the earth and the plants tend to dry out because the heat is evaporating the moisture from the plants. Now, this can also happen inside the body. Heat can damage the fluids that nourish and moisten our tissues and our joints. So we want to protect the body against the effects of heat during the summertime. We do this by eating cooling foods that are going to help to clear heat from the body and also nourish and moisten the body. In addition to that, because it's hot outside, the air can hold more moisture. So we have this potential for dampness or humidity that can hang in the air. So at the same time that we are nourishing the fluid of the body, we also want to protect against unhealthy fluid retention that can cause swelling, discomfort, and low appetite during the summer. So we do this by eating foods that help to resolve dampness. So today, we are going to focus on foods that are cool or cooling to clear heat and to protect against the hot summertime. We're going to eat foods that have a bitter flavor. Now the bitter flavor helps to drain and clear heat from the body, it also helps to drain that unhealthy fluid, as well as some bland foods. Bland foods help to resolve dampness and again, protect against the unhealthy fluid retention and help to protect the appetite during the summertime. Today's recipes are more breakfast or brunch style foods, but you can really eat them at any time during the day. Hong is going to make a beautiful congee made of rice and mung beans. And I'm going to make an egg dish that has tomatoes, fresh dandelion leaves, and crab. Today, the dish I make in Chinese is called Lü Dou Lian Zi Zou. Means uh, mung bean, lotus seed, porridge. The first ingredient I use is mung bean. The reason I use mung bean is because the summer is the season dominated by heart, the fire organ. And the summer tends to be hot and uh, we want to something cooling. Most uh, food that is cooling is maybe a little bit bitter in terms of vegetables. And, but mung bean is not bitter. Mung bean is sweet and cooling. It enters the heart meridian and the stomach meridian. It will cool heart and at the same time will cool stomach because in the summer, a lot of time, people have a thirsty and a poor appetite because it's so hot. This will help those kind of things and also keep the heart calm. Then the second ingredient I choose, the shape of it looks like a heart. It's called a lianzi. It's a lotus seed, look like a heart. And the lotus seed, it is sweet and neutral in temperature. In terms of function, it helps tonifying the middle jaw, the spleen and the stomach the organs in Chinese medicine strengthen the digestive system and also spleen transform the dampness because sometimes in certain areas it's not only hot, it's also humid like Florida and even Chicago the place that nearby water and the 
heat will steam up the water becomes uh, humid. And so Lianzi will help uh, promote the spleen's function to uh, transform the dampness. And also Lianzi can calm the heart, calm the sheng, the spirit of the heart, helps the sleep. And the last thing is Lianzi can strengthen the kidney. The kidney is the essence. Kidney is a water organ. Heart and the kidney are the fire and the water organ pair. When these two organs are harmonized, we will have an easier summer season. And the third ingredient, of course, everyone knows that it's uh, rice. Chinese loves rice. You know, when we grate into each other, the first thing we ask the other person is, 吃饭了吗? means, have you eaten your rice? And the last thing I add into my porridge is a citrus peel. It's an orange peel, in Chinese called the chen pi. It's dried citrus peel. The function of it is to help moving qi, especially the stomach qi, and also descend the stomach qi a little bit because in the summer, people not only have a poor appetite, when it's hot and humid, people tend to be nauseated. And also, the orange peel, the flavor of it is a little bit bitter, and also the temperature is slightly warm. It will kind of balance the mung bean's uh, temperature and the taste. Added together, it will create a savory taste. Okay, now let's do it. I will add all these things except the orange peel in the crack pot and rinse it twice before I add 10 cups of water and let it cook. I will rinse it twice to get rid of the water from this slow cooker. Not have the rice and the mung bean escape from this. So I do this, put the cover on, drain the water like this. And now I'm ready to add good water to cook it. I will use 10 cups of water. I will break the chen pi into pieces like a quarter size to help the flavor of the kanji and also the digestion. And of course the color, the yellow color for the earth salt. And turn the temperature to low, have it cook for at least 8 hours. For overnight it will be good. Then next morning the breakfast is ready for you to enjoy. Today's recipe is called dandy eggs because we are using dandelion in one of our ingredients for this egg dish. So we are going to start off today with four eggs. Now eggs nourish yin. So this is going to be one of our ingredients that's going to help to nourish the fluid of the body. So we're going to take four eggs and we're going to take about a tablespoon of hummus. Now I'm using hummus because garbanzo beans help to eliminate dampness. So if you are someone who lives in a climate where there is humidity during the summertime, foods that eliminate dampness are going to be helpful for you and hummus is going to be one of those. So I'm going to take about a tablespoon of hummus and mix it in with the four eggs. And you want to mix until it's completely smooth. Beautiful. All right, we're just going to set that aside for a minute. So we're going to move over to the stove where we're going to use a small to medium frying pan. You want to turn the stove on to medium to low heat. All right, once that's on, we're going to add about a half to one tablespoon of uh, high temperature cooking oil. Today I'm using avocado oil because it has a pretty neutral flavor and I don't want that oil to overpower the other flavors of the dish. All right, wait for that to get warm. We're going to add one beef steak tomato that has been cut into large pieces. They don't need to be perfect because they're going to cook down mostly and you're not really going to see the shape or notice the size too much. Once the pan has reached full temperature, we're going to add our tomatoes. Get a nice sizzle going. Now we're cooking the tomatoes first to start to reduce some of the fluid because we don't want our eggs to be too wet. So these are just going to cook for about three to five minutes. Not too long, just enough for them to soften and to evaporate some of the liquid that's held inside the tomato. 
Now when I cut these tomatoes up, I removed the seeds and discarded them because the seeds also carry a lot of extra liquid and we don't need that in this recipe. So tomatoes are also a cooling food and they help to clear heat from the body. So we have the eggs that are going to nourish the yin, the hummus that is going to help to resolve dampness, and the tomatoes are going to clear heat. Tomatoes also help to produce fluids inside the body as well, so multi-purpose. All right, after about two to three minutes, the tomatoes have gotten soft and they started to lose their skin, and so now is the time to add the eggs. So we're just gonna make sure the tomatoes are evenly distributed around the base of the frying pan. I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium low because we don't need it so hot for the rest of the recipe. All right, so now I have my eggs that I mixed with the tablespoon of hummus. And the eggs are just gonna go right over the tomatoes. Make sure the whole surface of the bottom of the pan is covered by the eggs. All right, once the eggs are in, we are going to add about one to two cups of the diced dandelion leaves. Now, dandelion is our bitter flavor. It's also cooling, so it's going to, again, help to drain heat and unhealthy fluid from the body. So we're just gonna pile about one to two cups, like I said, of dandelion leaves right on top. This you can kind of play around with. If you really like greens, you can add more. If you're not so sure, you can add less. It's a really nice, fresh flavor. And then I'm going to take my favorite ingredient of the whole dish is the crab. Now I bought this delicious Dungeness crab from the Portland Farmer's Market. You can also find crab meat that has been canned um, in your local grocery store. Or if you uh, live in a place that has fresh seafood, please go for the fresh crab because the flavor is going to be better. But if you don't have fresh crab available to you, the canned crab works just as well. So I have two to four ounces of fresh crab claw meat. And crab is also cooling. It's going to clear heat from the body. And it is delicious. So I'm just gonna place this around the dandelion, making sure it's fairly evenly distributed. Make it look beautiful because we want our food to be pretty. Because when the food is pleasing to the eye, it's more pleasing to the stomach. And to garnish, we are going to use this very special purple basil that is brought to us by local Portland, Oregon company, Live Local Organic. All right, and last but not least, I'm going to place a piece of beautiful purple basil just on top. Now basil is actually warming in nature, um, but it acts as a way to stimulate the digestion. Now like I said in the summertime, sometimes we lose our appetite because of the heat, so it's helpful to have something that's going to help to stimulate the appetite so that we can continue to nourish ourselves in a healthy way throughout the summer. Alright, so I've got all my ingredients in the pan. I'm just going to place the cover over and let the steam and the heat cook the rest of the eggs, warm up the crab. The crab's already been cooked, so we don't need to worry about that, and let the flavors melt. While it's cooking, it's better to keep it on a lower temperature and air on the side of lower, because the eggs will still cook through. Um, it just might take a little bit longer, but if you cook it on a higher temperature, you really risk burning or browning the bottom before the rest of the eggs are cooked through. So it's good to keep it on like a low, medium, low heat during this time. And again, this is gonna take about five to seven minutes. All right, it's been about seven minutes using this stove in our kitchen today. I'm gonna to take it off the heat, just like that. And there is our beautiful dandy eggs. Let's see how the product turns out. Okay. Wow. Mmm. Smells good. Yeah, it smells good. Yeah. It smells nice and toasty, but I'm getting uh -huh. like some hints of citrus. Yes, we added the chunky this citrus peel to the uh, mung bean and the lotus seed mm -hmm. for the color and the flavor and also for uh, helping the digestion. Sounds great. Uh -huh. Are you ready to eat? Oh, I'm so ready. Why don't you tell me what you have going on over here? What are these for? Okay, 
And the best thing about this dish is you can choose your different toppings according to the flavor you like mm -hmm. and also color you like. Nice, so it's customizable. Yes. Great. Yeah, and uh, I like to choose rainbow color, or at least the five colors that match the five organs we talk about in Chinese medicine. Definitely, and we're the rainbow kitchen, so we need to be colorful. Yes, yes. And we talked about the black color in the last episode, mm -hmm. and uh, here I choose the black sesame seed. Mm -hmm. Black sesame seed is sweet and neutral in terms of temperature and it for nourish kidney essence. Mm -hmm. And the kidney is water organ, heart is a fire organ. Choose a thing to nourish kidney essence can help the body be balanced, like the fire and the water balance. Right, because since the summer is the fire season, we don't want to emphasize the fire because it'll blaze out of control. Yes. So we have supplement the water organ to help to control the fire. Definitely. I get it. Uh -huh. And the second thing I choose is the raspberry. Oh, why thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love raspberries. Me too. Look at this. Don't you think the shape and the color of raspberry looks like a heart? It does. Very cute. <laughs> sweet and slightly warm and a little bit sour so it can uh, uh, nourish kidney essence mm -hmm. and also helps the liver mm -hmm. the mother organ of the uh, heart mm -hmm. and uh, when the mother organ gets uh, supported the child is happier always uh -huh. and uh, yeah it, because it's a little bit sour so it's good for the eyes also mm -hmm. and uh, another reason I add the raspberry of course is for the color and the third thing, you know what this is. Sunflower seeds. Yes. I'm going to try some of these too. Okay, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I eat sunflower seeds, I feel very satisfied. Mm -hmm. My friend called me sunflower as a nickname. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> you are. So you're sure. bright. You're bright and happy. Oh, thank like you. Oh, also, it's a flower. It's a summertime food. Yeah. And uh, um, this is a salted and roasted um, sunflower seed so it will add a little bit of salty flavor to the kanji mm -hmm. and uh, it is a seed also like both the sesame seed and the sunflower seed are seed mm -hmm. seed in chinese the character is called zi zi means seed mm -hmm. and the both will also support the kidney i see because the seed is the essence of the plant yes so it will help to support our essence uh-huh yeah awesome okay Great. Ready? You, want, you want to see my dish? Yes. All right. Here, my these are. I'm calling these dandy eggs. Okay. <laughs> because That's I use great. the dandelion. That's awesome. Wow. There we Look go. at this color. Wow. Smell good. Thank you. And it also has the ocean smell because of the because uh, the crab. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so you're getting that that salty ocean smell, which is always nice in the summertime. Really uh -huh. refreshing. Definitely, and also the shape and the color is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It looks like a blossom flower in the summer. Oh, I thank you. Uh -huh. And we have we have lots of colors in this dish too. We've got uh, the yellow from the egg, uh -huh. and we have red from the tomato. Yes. Um, green from the dandelion. We've got a little bit of like the black purple from uh -huh. the purple basil, and uh -huh. then white from the crab. Okay. Is it okay if I pick a crab or eat first? <gasps> no. <laughs> for this summer's episode of The Rainbow Kitchen. We hope that the summer brings you good health and good happiness. And also balance. Definitely, always balance. I'll cheers yes. to that. Okay, cheers. Yeah.